With the price of Intel chips going higher and higher, it was only a matter of time that many laptop manufacturers switched to AMD's new gen processors. And today I have with me the Asus TUF-A15 gaming laptop, which comes with the Ryzen 5 4000 series processor and a dedicated NVIDIA graphics. The TUF series basically focuses on delivering the perfect balance between processing power and gaming performance. And the A series within the TUF sort of lies between the budget gaming laptops and the high-end expensive ones. So with that, hopefully you've got some idea about what kind of device the A15 actually is. Yes, it does not boast the latest cooling tech and so, but it does not compromise on performance either. Now, I've been using the TUF A15 for my work and gaming for quite some time now, and to be honest, it has impressed me in bits and parts. So let's dive straight into the review of the ASUS TUF A15 and find out what I believe works for this laptop and what does not. But before getting started, this one is a base variant equipped with 8GB of RAM, 512GB storage, AMD Ryzen 5 4600, and NVIDIA GTX 1650 Ti. Obviously, there are other configurations of the A15 available in the market. For higher prices, you can get a system equipped with Ryzen 9 and RTX graphics. Oh, and you get an Asus M5 gaming mouse and a really decent backpack included inside the box. So with that out of the way, let's get into some gritty details about this device. Design-wise, you get two variants of the A15. One of them is an all-plastic bonfire black, and the other one is the Fortress Grey with aluminum and plastic. The one I have is the Fortress Grey. It has a clean design with a big TUF logo in the middle. And there are four screw-like topping in all four corners. And personally, I like this clean design over the accented lines of the bonfire black variant. It can blend in well in any environment and yet retain its gaming vibes. The plastic variant kind of feels cheap too. So the aluminium design one would be my preference any day of the week. The lid extends a bit in the portion of the bezel where the Subpar 720p webcam is located. It helps you open the lid easily and I found this feature to be handy too. The left side of the device contains most of the ports that you'll be using. It has a power input, an Ethernet port, an HDMI port, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports, USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port with DisplayPort 1.4 support, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. On the right side, there's a single USB 2.0 Type-A port. On the higher-end models, you will get air exhaust on the right side too, but my unit does not have one. The back side does have air exhaust vents on the left and on the right side. There's also a cutout above which contains the LED status lights. There are some air vents underneath too in order to maintain the airflow. On the left side, you'll get a black brushed plastic design. And because of that, it is not very much prone to strains. It contains a full-size chiclet keyboard and just above it is another air intake vent. Overall, in my month of use, this laptop feels sturdy, rigid, and robust. It also has military-grade certification. Although I have not tested to what extent the A15 can withstand bruises, but its build quality does not make me question it either. The lid does have a bit of flex, but it is not something to worry about. The laptop is also not the thinnest one in the market, but it is not thick either. It kind of falls in between, and I think that should be fine for many. So it will fit perfectly inside your backpack, but carrying it daily to work is bound to give your shoulder some workout. As mentioned previously, the ASUS TUF A15 has a full-size chiclet keyboard with numpads. The keyboard deck is rigid and can withstand pressure considerably. Though try not to smash it if you ever find yourself losing a game. Anyway, the keyboard has a single zone lighting and supports aura modes such as static, color cycle, and more. The WASD keys are further highlighted because of them being transparent. You can change the modes by pressing the function button and the left and right arrow keys. Furthermore, you can customize it by going to the armory crates. Unfortunately, the keyboard does not have a dedicated button for the armory crate and you will have to access it through the application itself. The keyboard does come with a dedicated button to toggle between the three performance modes. 
Also, they were able to squeeze in a numpad in the setup, but it does come at a cost. In order to incorporate the numpads, ASUS has reduced the size of the arrow keys and it does not sit well with me at all. However, the rest of the keys are fine. They produce a satisfying click, thereby it makes typing quite enjoyable too. Just below the keyboard is a big trackpad with buttons for left and right click. It is in the middle of the deck and for those who have a big hand, you might find yourself accidentally brushing off against it while typing or playing games. The buttons on the trackpad are great but I was slightly disappointed with the accuracy of the pointer as there were times that it got me frustrated because it did not move in the direction that I wanted it to go. On the display front, you get a 15.6 inches 144Hz 1080p IPS LCD display that supports adaptive sync. Sounds good on paper, right? But the reality is very different. Although the brightness levels here is good, but the color vibrancy of this panel does not hit the right mark. It has an average grade to grade response time of around 19ms and that is not good at all. Especially considering its competition like the MSI GL65 which has an average response time of 5.3 milliseconds. The A15's response time on the other hand comes nowhere near the required response time of 6.94 milliseconds. That means the 144Hz panel does not meet the standards. Thus, you are bound to witness some smearing and ghosting. Similarly, I would not recommend this laptop for content creators either. The panel covers just 66% of sRGB color gamut. So the A15 in this regard is well below the average. Thus, the color seems saturated and washed out and thereby causing the color vibrancy issue that I was talking about earlier. Anyways, under the hood, it is powered by AMD Ryzen 5 4600H CPU. It is based on the Renault architecture and has 6 cores. This coupled with the NVIDIA GTX 1650Ti spells for a power combination. So it's just sad that this display panel does not live up to the task. There are three different performance modes in which you can use this laptop. And they are silent mode, performance mode and turbo mode. But be wary, the fan noise will get louder as per your selected mode. The turbo mode will apply 100 MHz GPU core overclock and 120 MHz GPU memory overclock. Thus, you're bound to get the best gaming performance in the turbo mode. But know that you will only be able to use the turbo mode when you have plugged in your computer. Under the hood, you will find a single heat pipe that is shared between the CPU and GPU. This too depends upon your model. This model has a lower tire specs, therefore cooling system is minimal on this one. However, with the Ryzen 9 models, you will find more heat pipes and a much better cooling system. While the idle CPU and GPU temperature was around 46 degrees, I tested its thermal capacity while playing Battlefield 5 and it was really impressive. I tested the game in low, medium and ultra settings and also toggled between the performance modes. We can see that the CPU and GPU run highest in the turbo mode and that is expected as it enhances the performance significantly. The fans run noisily too. Also, I did not find the keyboard deck getting hot while dedicating hours into my games in this laptop. The air vent area above the keyboard did get warm but that is not the area where you will be focusing while playing games. Thankfully, the WASD keys and the palm rest did not get that heated. However, I did not find the fans obstructing my in-game sound. Still, I feel that for a more immersive game experience, you might want to use a headphone while playing games. As mentioned earlier, the display does feel underwhelming considering the specs. It does not feel as vibrant as I wanted it to be, but it does not create any lags while playing, so that's a very good thing. Now, let's get into the actual performance while playing various games. I tested the games in turbo mode as I wanted to test out the best possible results in the games. While playing Battlefield 5, I got 105 FPS in low settings, 81 FPS in medium settings and 67 to 73 FPS in the ultra settings. Similarly, in Apex Legends, I got around 125 FPS in the lowest settings, 95 to 100 FPS in medium and around 70 in the ultra setting. Likewise, in Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, the results were as follows, around 87 in the lowest settings, 80 in medium and 45 to 50 in ultras. 
so basically you will be able to enjoy most of the games in medium settings quite easily. AAA titles may become laggy if played in ultra or maximum settings. And as its display panel is not that great for the price range, I would suggest you play in the medium settings for the best result. After all, you wouldn't want to trade FPS for higher details in a lackluster panel. Needless to say, you probably won't have to worry about getting through your day-to-day -day tasks like web surfing and all on this laptop. I had about 20 tabs on Google Chrome open at one point and I did not notice it affecting the performance. On the storage front, it has 512GB NVMe M.2 SSD and it is fast. You can see for yourself the read-write speed of this laptop. Although the A15 has a smaller 49 watt hour battery, it did give me good battery life. With around 70% brightness and volume at 100% with the RGB on the keyboard on, I got about 1.5 hours of gaming and 4.5 hours of web surfing. Well, as I said in the beginning, there are things that work brilliantly for this laptop and there are things that do not work. It has great internals and a decent cooling system that helps achieve good performance levels. However, one can't help but wonder what Asus could have achieved with a better display. The underwhelming display does not mean that it is of no use. I mean, it is a 144Hz panel after all. However, I did not quite feel the punch that I had expected in terms of this display. Barring that, the ASUS TUF A15 is a very good budget gaming laptop. So that was all for our review of the ASUS TUF A15 budget gaming laptop. What do you think about this laptop? Do let us know in the comments below. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.